Stephen Harper said no, we couldn't spare anybody. Uh, so I think, you know, the peacekeeping efforts are, were invented by Lester Pearson before he was Prime Minister, when he resolved the Suez Crisis, for which he won the Nobel Peace Prize. I, I think we have to return to those peacekeeping roots. Uh, it's, uh, it's always been a source of pride to Canadians. I, I work with a lot of peacekeeping veterans who live in the community in Sydney. I rode with them and the, it was such an honor. They asked me to, to ride with them to, I, on Canada Day in the Sydney Parade. I got in trouble with some people because they had a really big Cadillac that I rode in. But anyway, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not going to get an 89-year-old peacekeeper putting me on the handlebars of his bicycle. So I, I, so we do need to do this. Uh, it's one of the ways that Stephen Harper is trying to remake our idea of who we are as a people is by repeatedly describing Canada as a warrior nation. It's a, it's a little, and I think there's nothing, we, we, it's a very tricky, slippery slope to, to, uh, to change language. You do not want to, for one minute, to denigrate the, the fantastic people who join the Canadian military and put their lives at risk and are in missions around the world. We need to support those operations. It's not always going to be peacekeeping. But sometimes it's got to be peacekeeping, and, and so we need to put ourselves back in front of peacekeeping because we invented it. Uh, so there's a hand one up. Was it related to this one, sir? Yeah. Well, it is related, yes. Seeing as we are a, a warrior country, I think our prime minister should get in front of our troops and lead the charge. <laughs> Our treatment of I mean, Stephen Harper has also been, I think, in the history of this country, the least supportive of veterans. And, and losing the veterans' offices across the country puts tremendous pressure, by the way, on the Canadian Legion, which is doing a great job trying to provide services for people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. We are not doing enough for our veterans by any means, and we are also letting them down in terms of lump sum payments for disabilities and so on. So it's, it's an, I, I find it ironic that he would position Canada as a warrior nation and then fail to take care of the people who are returning from war and conflict zones. So it, we'll be pushing on that as well. Look, I'm aware of the fact that we're almost out of time. When, how long do we have this room till, Jonathan? Nine o'clock. Oh, okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'll keep answering questions then. Um, that I saw a couple of hands going up first. There's the gentleman standing next to Mark Newfeld, and then there's the gentleman, I'm not quite sure, I can't quite see if it's Emma, yes, then you. And then, who, am I missing any, I'm not, yes, the very back. So we'll do one, two, three, and then I'll cluster back towards here, okay. Oh, there's uh, more and more people in Canada and locally uh, expressing greater and greater concern about the particulate spraying of air, uh, uh, aerosol material being distributed by uh, jet aircraft. Um, uh, personally, I just recently uh, interviewed at Clifford Carnicum of the Carnicum Institute, and uh, we were interested in what the Green Party's position is about trying to expose this matter in a more open form debate as uh, magazines like the Angora and locally run media are trying to bring this to the forefront. We can't seem to get any platform to discuss it because it's a matter of great concern for the environment. Yeah. The position is, of the Green Party and me personally, is I'm, I want to find evidence that allows us to take a position that is actually occurring in the way in which you've described it. I think, it's, I think it's quite possible, I'm very concerned about geoengineering, I think it's quite possible that there's a government somewhere in the world that thinks it's a good idea and we currently don't regulate it, we don't have any global treaties, against the distribution of particulate matter in the upper atmosphere. There are a lot of people who've talked about trying to reduce the impact of increased CO2 by actually deliberately distributing particulate matter to lead to an artificial